an article here, see here, here, courtesy of Sky Sports, that kind of fully fleshes out some of the issues regarding Everton Hagen. You know, I don't kind of read through this currently now. It says Manchester United lunch boxes, no carrots, and take of a limbo. What's the latest at Old Trafford? Um, it says here United's last um, latest reverse four three at Copenhagen on Wednesday night, having thrown away a two goal lead and see striker Max Rashford sent off severely threatens the chances of qualify for the Champions League last sixteen. I might be in a minority here, but I want us to get knocked out of Champions League so badly. I don't want us to play Champions League football. I don't want us to play in Europa League football. Nothing. I want us just to have the week completely free so that if Eric Ten Hag, so we can see if Eric Ten Hag can actually coach these players into being a somewhat, you know, um, cohesive footballing side because at the moment I'm still not even sure about his coaching credentials right because he's completely abandoned them because he came to United and allegedly according to him he doesn't have the right players to play the Ajax way when really and truly most players most managers have their philosophies um, you know if they can't if they don't have the players that can fit their philosophy they just get them out and get players in that can so the fact that he hasn't done that and he's basically bending to the players will is a bit strange but whatever so for me personally I'd much prefer to see what he can do with a full week of you know maybe no midweek games and shit because we're already out of the Carabao Cup anyway as well so that might be actually a good thing so I actually don't want us to go through the Champions League especially if we have no chance of winning it anyway what's the fucking point um, it continues meanwhile United are languishing down in 8th place in Premier League after a difficult start of Premier League campaign this season and their Carabao Cup defence ended at the last 16th stage by Newcastle that is before that we even get into the ongoing takeover saga with Sir Jim Ratcliffe now set to purchase 25% Tanakh's future is clouded in uncertainty and it should be to be fair i think every manager should be have their futures always kind of counting uncertainty unless they're winning or unless they're doing what their remit is in terms of i don't know developing the squad uh, playing a attractive brand of football whatever their remit is if they're not meeting it their future should be in jeopardy i feel like you know Eric Hart came in under the remit or i guess his assertion of what united wanted was that they had to win at all cost which is why he went for all the trophies last season which you know evidently didn't work ended up blowing up in our face and burning out a lot of players and getting them injured it did result in us winning a carabao cup and obviously securing top for football but if you're not winning if you're not kind of meeting those standards now right we've already lost a bunch of games we're at the Carabao Cup we're probably going to be at the Champions League very very soon your future should be in doubt it shouldn't just be like a trustless manager forever and everything that's not how it works at this level of football it should never be that way in my personal opinion even if I do think he will eventually end up being a good manager sometimes maybe he just came too soon to United who knows maybe the infrastructure isn't there for him also because you know you look at Ajax you know since he left they've been a bit of a free fall they haven't really been where they should be in terms of as a club in terms of their playing style so maybe he is a decent manager but he obviously needs the infrastructure to help him but at United his future should be uncertain because it hasn't been the greatest tenure um, and obviously in my opinion it's kind of flat to deceive a little bit it continues the short term United have got a big game against Luton on Saturday after that he'll have a bit of breathing space with the national break the Luton game is a big one because Luton have been shocking this season in Premier League but most likely we might give them a bit of a chance right I wouldn't be surprised if Luton end up winning that game so um, driving this morning I was listening to radio with some United fans calling in saying it's perhaps time for a turn out to leave and the fact that they've lost 9 in 17 games this season is he the man who's under pressure um, it continues um, you've got to keep things under perspective from United's point of view they have no plans to replace the manager and have also as a club in limbo because they would dismiss him if they wanted to and there's been a take of a saga over 12 months so that's the big thing that he's got in his favour because there's a current takeover going on, um, your logical, sensible brain tells you it's very unlikely that you, the United board will ratify or will agree to sack the manager in the midst of them, you know, finalizing this minority takeover bid, whatever it may be. That's not likely to happen. So it'd have to be a real catastrophe of events to get to there. But even if that is the case, you look at our previous coaches and how long it took them to get sacked. The, the Glazers just don't, you know, pull the trigger straight away. They obviously have a remit where if you don't win, you know, if you don't get top four football basically they don't really care about trophies but if you don't get top four football usually you're out of a job so that basically is the main thing so i think we're people probably gonna have to be you know suffer with Ayrton hog for a while just yet he's not gonna go anywhere and if anything i also believe that he's not entirely to blame it's obviously the owners the owners are the big reason why we're in this current situation the glazers have been one of if not the worst owners in football history and they've kind of dragged this club into the fucking mud they've dragged us into the depths of hell and unless they leave and we have a full takeover we're never going to be successful because they don't have the ability to create a sporting structure or system or you know whatever it may be to get the best out of you know elite players elite managers and so far we've had a kind of never-ending cycle of just 
failure after failure after failure since Alex Ferguson left. So the only common denominator is the Glazers, and I think they're the ones that are mostly to blame. But obviously, in this interim, you just can't have managers playing, you know, a shit brand of football, also getting shit results, also being knocked out of competitions and shit, and just staying in a job. It doesn't work that way just because the owners are shit. It doesn't work that way, unfortunately. Um, it continues. Tengar's contract Lee is on pretty safe ground too. Premier League managers have clauses which make it difficult for them to be dismissed. His future is clouded in uncertainty, but everything at Man United is clouded in uncertainty, which is very, very true. Um, it continues here. Too much stick, not enough carrot. We got a picture here of Jaden Sancho. The Jaden Sancho saga has been really uh, an eye opening one because for me, it kind of represents why United will never be successful. Because essentially, to give you a quick synopsis of it, Jaden Sancho um, fell out with Derek Van Hag, the manager, because um, they had a disagreement as to how much effort he was putting in in training. And then he got dropped for, I think, a certain game. And then, um, and then I think Eric Van Hag made a comment about Jaden Sancho not performing well in training uh, in a press conference, which upset Jaden Sancho because it made it seem like he was unprofessional. He posted a statement on his um, social media denying that. And of course, that didn't you know sit too well with the management. And then he got banished to the under 21s um until he, until he apologizes but he's refusing to apologize because he basically thinks he's got nothing to apologize for um he's been training as best as he can and the manager just has his favorites that's essentially what he's been saying he's kind of been intimating that you know anthony and maybe even rashford just get picked regardless of their form whereas you know he there's nothing he can do to ever get consideration because those guys are always gonna get picked and i think he i think he may have mentioned something about him always getting subbed first as well i'm not really too sure but he wasn't happy basically with Eric Ten Hag. and i I think at a big club or a club that actually you know cares about sport and success these things happen it is what it is but I think the club would have stepped in you know Aiton Hogg has every right to not be happy with a player if he thinks that player isn't training to his standards even you know I don't I believe both parties Jaden Sancho also has a right to fight back and say no I'm training well you just don't pick me because you have your favorites they're both of their rights to say that it's professional football it is what you're gonna be disagreements all the time I just feel like the club, if we were serious, they would have stepped in. They would have stepped in and said, hey, you guys need to give it a break. Either this guy leaves in January and we make it very clear that he's leaving or you figure out a way to kind of make this work and he gets back into the team. But you can't have a player, you know, that costs us, what, 80 plus million, however much thousands he's on per month, per week, the brand he is, whatever it may be, just lounging, um, you know, um, in the Philippine under 21. doesn't make any sense. He should be playing with the team or he should be out of the club all together and, you know, kind of clear him off the wage bill and whatnot. But the fact that the club haven't, um, stepped in to mediate between both parties says everything because Eric Ten Hag has been basically be left to deal with this on his own for the most part they've given him full control of it but I feel like the club should have stepped in and decided to either sell Sancho or to make sure that he gets back into the team because they need him as an asset to basically maybe even just use him until the January transfer window and if you want to move him you can move him but just this limbo and this kind of you know weird approach to things isn't going to sit well especially when you read the reports that you know he's getting his lunch given into him in a separate box and he can't sit with all the the main players it's fucking ridiculous really how far it's gotten it didn't need to get this ugly um let's read the article it says if you're someone spending more than one billion make buying a stake in may united one of the things you probably were looking for is going to be with sancho the guy was an england player when he was at dortmund he was one of the best young players in the world he was probably more than 200 grand a week and yet he's eating packed lunches he's not allowed into the first team dressing room at all because of a standoff with Eric Ten Hag because he won't say sorry about something that he posts on social media um i'm sure one of the things they've with Bra Brailsford and so Jim Ratcliffe is going to do is try to solve the situation which has got out so out of control and needs fixing one way or the other either Sancho leaves in January or they'll get to have to go to them or they'll have to get them two in a room together and not their heads together to sort it out Although also Sir Jim will have a difficult task winning over some United fans. Yet again, this weekend, there has been protests at Old Trafford with a 1958 group releasing a statement this morning saying they want a full sale only and we're we'll protesting, which is what we need. Basically, we need a breath of fresh air. We need a change. The Gators have been terrible in any way in general as fucking owners. And even if they weren't terrible as owners, we just need a change. It's been 20 plus years of their fucking, you know, um, stranglehold on the club. They need to fucking go or have their helicopter crash into a mountain. One of the others. It continues. They don't. Um, I think someone buying 25% um, of the club will solve their future. One final thing I would say on Ten Hag is people are watching the performances and asking whether the players are playing for him. I think there's an element of dressing room that have lost faith, but what happens at a club all over the country? The same situation has created a lot of splits in dressing room, and one person I was speaking to said the problem with Ten Hag is that there's been too much stick and not enough carrot. Um, he's got this reputation as being a real disciplinarian, but with modern footballers, the stick sometimes works, but you've also got to have to dangle the carrot in front of them see things from their point of view 
put an arm around their shoulder maybe he needs to work on those things i don't think that's true i i think Eric Ten Hag has kind of been fucked by the owners i don't think that's true i think you can get away with being a disciplinarian that is very much stick centric right or stick forward right um in, in terms of that you know approach with players but what you need is that you need owners and the board and the club to back you all the way in your decision so you'll do a thing like what Arteta did with Aubameyang and a few other players where if they're not kind of up to scratch or if they've got too much of an outside influence in the dressing room you get rid of them so that you can kind of re-establish your authority that's what you need to do and I feel like unfortunately for Eitan Haag he never had that opportunity he wanted to get rid of a bunch of players I think on his list of players there was like six or seven of them in the, beginning of, or the, in the summer who were essentially on the chopping block and I think it even included Sancho and Martial and none of them left except for Fred and Fred the only reason why he left because he actually pushed for the deal for him to go to I think Basiktas or Galatasaray one of the others and he pushed for that deal himself because he wanted to play he wanted to play football week in week out and for the most part from what I've seen online he's you know he's playing pretty decently over there way better than Matt man but then fucking Mason Mount is anyway and probably Amrabat so I think the club fucked Ericsson Hag in that they didn't give him the ability to get rid of the players who maybe have a little bit too much influence on the dressing room and get the players in that he can get into back them by the moment what I've also seen which is a big issue he hasn't been able to connect with the players out there who are obviously overrated and think way too highly of themselves anyway and probably need to leave the club ASAP and but then he's also it feels like falling out of the players he signed right the likes of the mounts the likes of the amrabats the likes of the varans it feels like he hasn't really connected even even casemiro it feels like he's somehow managed to fall out with those guys so i'm not sure what's going on i'm not sure if this is just a you know a rebellion from the players because of the treatment i've seen of sancho if it's because in general they're all up their asses i'm not really too sure what's going on but he's got a real big job on his hands and the problem with Ericsson hug the pressure is mounting because we're not we know it's one thing to not play good football but we're also not getting the results so the results aren't even saving him and with this minority state coming in um, usually in most companies if you know you get a bit of investment or whatever it may be they usually want to have some say so in the infrastructure of the club and the personnel so it's very likely that Ericsson Hogg would be out of a job anyway regardless if he does well or not they're going to want to have their own man in but the fact that he's doing so poorly is going to put pressure on him because he's going to know they're going to want their own man in ASAP so you know everybody's kind of livelihood is on a chopping block at the moment even the likes of John Murto, the Darren Fletchers the Richard Arnolds all these fucking guys who have been leeching off United for years and years and years doing absolutely jack shit they're all kind of going to be you know, under fire very very soon if that Sergio Rakiv gets rectified or if the you know Qatar bid later on kind of goes through who knows but so far it's not looking good for United we are absolutely in the MUD and then last thing I want to mention was this conversation or this kind of stream or this kind of you know press conference sorry courtesy of May United with Eric Ten Hag uh, before the Luton game which really infuriated me because again another example as to why we're in the mud it says here Marcus Rashford Harrison Hogg says he's not happy with United's form uh, the forwards form sorry but he says he will find his goal soon so a clear rejection no, a cl an acknowledgement of Rashford's poor form but also no desire to kind of change him and bring somebody else in or drop him altogether just to kind of fresh up the squad it's just let's just persist with playing Rashford even when he's not playing well because he happens to be one of our better players but then again like I said what that ends up doing it creates a bad atmosphere in the dressing room because players automatically know it doesn't matter how well they're playing in training they're never ever going to play because the players that do get to play their position is somewhat solidified forever and ever and i absolutely hate that personally but let's continue it says here Ericton Hogg um, says both he and Marcus Rashford are not happy with the Man United's form this season Rashford has scored 30 goals in competition last season has just scored once in the start since the start of the season um, with United enduring their worst start to the campaign since 1974 Ericton Hogg the record breaker um, after 9 defeats in opening 17 games going into Saturday's home game against Luton Rashford has the worst negative expected goal differential out of any any Premier League player in the season demonstrated a 26 year old wasteful in front of goal um the England international was also sent off in the first half against Copenhagen and a quote I think he's not happy we are not happy we have expectations he has expectations of himself at this moment he's not in the best form but I know he'll be back and I know when the team is playing better he'll play better he'll score goals I'm confident of that and I don't know it's just a little bit too much praise for someone that hasn't done much you know like it doesn't need to be this praiseful it could just be a little bit neutral to give that maybe the player the inclination to kind of you know kick up the ass and also maybe give the player 
players on the sidelines uh, kind of nod that hey the spaces are open performer you can play it just feels a little bit too doting to me that's the one reason I go you know I kind of not like it it's that this season he'll improve his goal goals he's totally in the team he's tot- he's totally in the team and aware of everything he'll be back on track so um, that can happen very quickly sometimes you need only one game I'm sure that he'll get there um, United to go into the home game and newly promoted Luton having lost three out of their last four but Ten Hag is adamant that his side can respond we are very disappointed to lose the game any game but finally it's about the end result it's always about a process thinking about a process and managing the process that's the only thing i focus on we often prove that we can like in recent wins against fulham and brentford overcome big again like the way he talks like he's not a very charismatic person kind of speaks like a robot and also he's incredibly delusional like you know like our performances haven't been great we haven't played well since probably that first half in the Carabao Cup against fucking Crystal Palace. We've been shocking the, throughout the majority of the season and maybe the latter end of last season. So this whole, you know, just be positive for positive sake approach is really fucking insulting. I'm not going to lie. Um, but yeah, um, that's where we are currently with United. Ayrton Hag is going to persist with Rashford. He's basically going to persist with him until his fucking legs fall off. You know what I mean? There's no way he's going to play any other player apart from Rashford apart from that. And that's been a really disappointing part. But I remember a lot of Ajax fans on social media saying this when Ayrton Hag was signed. Like, be careful of this guy because he's somebody that has his favorites and he doesn't really waver from them you know i mean he trusts them wholeheartedly especially considering the job that rashford did for you know Ayrton hog last season scoring 30 goals he's got so much good grace with Ayrton hog that is really you know he has to do something spectacularly wrong to ever get demoted completely and even the nightclub stuff right uh against fulham allegedly you know he basically got dropped but he didn't really make it official because he went out to china white after <laughs> we got beat at man city so clearly there's some issues there going on behind the scenes but you know they're trying to keep it closed doors because it's rashford and stuff so it's just a bit annoying but hey that situation we're in now when it comes to united that's the situation we're in now 